Hi, my name is Philip and I want to walk you through a new app on Splunk Base, the deep learning toolkit for Splunk. It comes as an extension to this well-known Splunk machine learning toolkit and it allows you to integrate custom deep learning or specific advanced machine learning models. First, it allows you to integrate seamlessly with your existing Splunk architecture and your machine learning toolkit known workflows like fit and apply models. Next, it will give you an overview about how you can use rapid predefined development workflows using JupyterLab notebooks that allow a data scientist or a machine learning engineer to quickly bring in new models and new algorithms into Splunk. Last but not least, you can tap into multi-GPU computing if you have the right hardware in place. You can use GPUs for heavily parallel processing, for example, to train deep neural network models. The whole app is built on so-called MLTK containers, which are pre-built Docker containers that consist of different frameworks and libraries like TensorFlow 2.0, PyTorch, or a set of NLP libraries if you want to address natural language processing use cases. The center section here around configuration, you can read uh, setup information, you can jump into your Docker setup to connect your Splunk search head to a Docker environment, and container management that allows you to control which MLTK containers are running and serving certain modeling purposes that you have within Splunk. Next to the configuration, you find a lot of different examples here, like classifiers, regressors, forecasting scenarios that use different custom models that you all find examples also with a Jupyter notebook. Moreover, you will also find interesting new things like autoencoders that you can use for clustering purposes or other interesting scenarios. Last but not least, there's also NLP, natural language processing, uh, we give one example using Spacey, for example, to have named entity recognition and extraction out of natural language text. All these examples wrap up the whole content package that you will find within the deep learning toolkit. Now let's see and get started with the Docker setup, assuming you want to set up this app in your environment. We simply go to the Docker setup page and define how the deep learning toolkit installed on a Splunk search head is connecting to your Docker environment. First, it checks for dependencies like the machine learning toolkit. Everything is installed here, so we have all dependencies found. And now we define how the connection to Docker looks like. In my case, I run an AWS instance as a single instance deployment node. This means that Docker and Splunk is running on the same instance. We can easily connect then to the Unix Docker socket and communicate with the API to that Docker environment. For local communication with the MLTK containers, we define the endpoint URL, which is in our case just the local host to local host communication. For external purposes like accessing this AWS instance and the JupyterLab notebooks or TensorBoard, we define an external URL. As soon as we do this, the setup runs through, connection is tested, and as soon as we are successfully connected, we can use the whole app. As soon as we are set up here, we can go to the container management page. On this dashboard, you see all the running containers. In our case, we have four active containers, six inactive ones. And let's assume we want to start a development container. Now, the concept of the development container is that you can launch pre-built images like TensorFlow 2.0 for GPU or for CPU, PyTorch or a set of NLP libraries. Let's assume we want to get started developing TensorFlow GPU code. We select the NVIDIA runtime here to access the GPU hardware that is on our AWS instance. And now we have access to a JupyterLab notebooks and TensorBoard. Let's jump into the JupyterLab notebooks and see how this looks like and what we can do there. As soon as we log in, we find pre-built notebooks that reference back to the examples that are existing within the Deep Learning Toolkit app. 
Like in our case, let's get started with a very simple example, a binary neural network classifier that allows us to build up a TensorFlow Keras-based neural network and then does a binary classification for a classification problem. As you're used to use notebooks, you can easily run and execute through the cells, get into your model building, initializing your model, investigating what you're doing, even training, in this case on a GPU instance, um, the model with a sample set of data. After that, uh, you can of course define how you apply the model. Um, and last but not least, also to load and store the model, save the model, load the model, and potentially provide a model summary for model information. For a data scientist, this would be the entry point to get into such a notebook, do the coding there, do the modeling there, do the experimentation, testing there. And as soon as we are finished, we simply hit save and under the hood, a Python module is extracted out of this predefined notebook and wrapped into a container accessible Python module that is now accessible out of Splunk. Let's jump back into Splunk, first the container overview where we came from. So this was the button how we went over there. And uh, for sake of completeness, let's also have a look at TensorBoard. Now let's assume we did the training at the last one here. So this should be showing the last um, training that we just ran through uh, the 10 epochs. Of course, we can also, you know, have a look at all the existing trainings. You see there's a lot of trainings already been going on. So um, that's how you can investigate easily what's happening in the TensorBoard during training. Let's jump back from the lab to the overview page and let's hit uh, example here. The example that we are referring to, the binary neural network classifier, this is exactly this example dashboard that is linked here. Now let's assume we want to run again the 10 training epochs, very tiny, very small, through this data set. Now out of Splunk, the data is transferred to the container. The container does the apply of the model. And as soon as the results come back, we will be able to investigate how the training ran through. We are not doing too bad after only 10 training epochs, but of course we can run this for more epochs. We can tune the model to achieve better accuracy, precision, recall F1 scores or get to a better confusion matrix. Let's wrap up. This was an example that was showing the workflow from the container management to the JupyterLab notebooks to a TensorBoard investigation of what the model training is doing and how it is wrapped back into Splunk, into a Splunk dashboard. Feel free to explore more of these examples that are shipping here with the app, like forecasting with convolutional neural networks. This is already preloaded here. You can see the bits transferred here and the forecast that is coming out of a CNN-based forecasting model. You can also investigate, for example, for clustering purposes, how an autoencoder is doing and what you can use from there. In this case, the simple little iris data set is being reconstructed by an autoencoder and you can nicely see the reconstruction error and different dimensions if we project here the hidden layers um, back into this scatter plot to investigate how the data set clusters, for example, in this case. All these examples um, wrap up as a last interesting topic, um, the NLP section, natural language processing. In this case, we can run through uh, spacey algorithms on arbitrary text readable data. You can easily put data into here for testing how um, this specific entity extraction is doing. And afterwards you get out information about um, persons, dates, places, organizations. So kind of interesting use cases that you can address with that. So to wrap up, finally, where do you find this toolkit? You easily jump to Splunk base and enter the deep learning toolkit for Splunk to search for it. Now you can download the bits as a usual Splunk app and happy Splunking.